Hi there everybody, it's Kendra here. I thought I'd do something a little different today and do a bit of a spin with me. So I thought we'd chat and do some spinning and I'll tell you a little bit about what I am working on. So I'm currently spinning up some BFL fiber that I have dyed and I'm hoping to make a sweater. That's kind of my end goal here. Uh, so far, I just have this one large bobbin filled and I've got a pile of fiber that is ready to go still. I do have a video coming at some point. I've been putting together some clips of like how I divided the fiber and things like that, but I want to wait until the finished item is knit before I do that. So that's like months down the road. Um, but this is me just working on it so far. You can see I'm using my Plyology spinning wheel. Again, this is just the beta tester version that I was sent back at the end of December, I think it was. And I've been using it ever since. I've still been loving it. I really can't really see myself going back to my traditional wheel. Uh, just for the type of spinning that I do, I, uh, yeah, it seems to kind of check all the boxes. Now I'm really excited to get like the final wheel. I know they've been working hard uh, printing all these wheels and assembling them and everything as part of their Kickstarter. Uh, and so I'm looking forward to that. But until then, this one has still been working great. You can see though, I do have a little paper, that blue that's spinning there tucked in. And that was from an issue back in January. I think I talked about it in my Plyology video where there was one piece that had a bit of a crack in it and I got some instructions to fix it, but before that it had started rubbing the gear a little bit, so it was slipping. And so just putting in a little extra thickness there solves it, um, but I will be getting another wheel and they have addressed that problem uh, for the wheels that will be going out. But that has, just putting a paper there has totally solved it. It's still usable for me. And you can see I don't have the foot pedal, or maybe you can't see, but you maybe saw that I flicked it on instead of using the foot pedal to turn it on. And I have really been enjoying that feature, even though, like I've heard on, I think it's the Ashford's e-spinners, that when they introduced the, the foot pedal for on and off, people really like that. For me, when I stopped using it, it was even more portable to not have to use that attachment. And because I do just like short forward draft, it's not a problem to turn it off on the spinner. And I've just been liking this whole assembly for when I decide to spin, which isn't all the time. Really, I haven't done too much lately until I decided to pick up this for my sweater spin. And see, I've been trying to be a little bit more intentional about spinning a little bit thicker and a little bit more twist than what I would normally choose to do. And so it does take a little bit of thinking and I know that there's definitely some inconsistencies, but I really don't mind. I like it to look hand spun. I like there being some bits of thick and thin, not huge discrepancies, but some of that I do like. I think I'm gonna chain ply it too, which will even it out a little, but just because it's my favorite form of plying and I'm hoping to get it quite a bit thicker by doing that, by having a few strands together. My goal is to knit something like the Reluctant Homeschooler pattern by Caitlin Hunter. It's just like an oversized grandpa sweater sort of thing, but it calls for a bulky weight and I don't know if I'm gonna get there. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see, but something along those lines is what I'm going for. And I'm hoping to add a little more twist into the singles uh, just so that it maybe will be a little more durable as a garment. I know I love the squishy feel of like the loosely spun merino and BFL, but adding in a little twist does seem to to make it a little more, I don't know if durable is the right word, but a little tougher. I may be overspun. I don't know how well you can see on this one. To the side here, there's some twisty bits, but I'm just playing with it, seeing what happens, and we'll see how it looks in the plying. I know in the past, sometimes I'll spin it a little looser in the single and then add quite a lot of uh, twist in the ply. But I'm trying to switch it up this time and add more than feels natural in the single and maybe do a little bit less in the ply and see how that works out. 
This is Superwash too, Superwash BFL that I dyed. And uh, it's just so fun, it's just so easy to spin. The fibers all just happy to pull apart and feels really nice. I dyed all this together in one big pot, but some areas were darker. You may maybe see over on this side, there's some bits that are quite a bit darker and that whole braid, and there was a few that had more contrast, like dark sections and light sections, and then some that were just more of this medium gray tone. And so I've been alternating to try to just split it up and so it's not just like half and half each style. But I'm interested to see if there'll be striping in the final sweater. I'm guessing there'll be a little bit, or at least some subtle striping, but we'll have to see. I'm hoping for more just subtle shifts between the different shades that won't be too noticeable. Better stop it and move to fill my bobbin better. I'm bad at that. I just keep going. I kind of forget about it, but then I end up with this lumpy bobbin in the end. So I'm going to try to remember to keep moving my slider down to fill my bobbin a little bit more evenly. Right now I've got the speed at about five or like halfway. I guess there's no numbers on it. And for the take up, I have it at an eight right now which is a little higher than I usually do, but again, with adding in the twist and stuff, it just, it's been working. So that is what I am going with for today. Well, for this whole spin, really. So far, I've definitely been a monogamous spinner. I know some people have many bobbins of projects on the go, but that is not for me. I just don't have First of all, the bobbins for it, although with this e-spinner, I do have three bobbins, whereas with my old spinning wheel, I just have the one. So anytime I'd wind something off, I'd wind it by hand, and yeah, it was just too much to switch between things, but more of a work on one, apply it, and have it be done before moving on to the next. You can see, too, in this section, using this nice crimp in the BFL. Really nice fiber. I always find spinning so mesmerizing to just sit and watch the fluff become spun and go in and it's a little different for me than knitting or than stitching. Just it uses maybe a different part of the brain. It's more about physical going in and out rather than following any kind of pattern or instruction or anything like that. So it is nice to switch between and I switch from doing those other things as someone who enjoys and appreciates a lot of different crafts. Got a few of these spin or stitch or knit with me things to kind of plan. I want to see how it goes. It's more about finding a little bit of quiet in the day than anything else, but I feel like maybe if I can escape for a few minutes here and there, I can put some of these together and just show you what I'm working on as it happens. And in something that requires maybe a little bit less editing than some of the videos I've put together in the past. And, uh, but hopefully you will still enjoy it. And if you have any ideas or questions or anything like that, please let me know. I'm always interested to hear the types of videos you like to watch. I'm almost through this braid here. And I need to remember to grab one of the ones that with the higher contrast, the black and lighter ones. But I'll get going a little more first. I have a new setup here in my crafty space with my computer so i'm hoping it it works i just moved it around today and so far i am really liking it i feel like it i have the same square footage the same amount of space but i feel like it gives me more room to do what i want to do so i'm really happy about that okay i'm gonna stop things here oh, don't go in so i thought i'd show you here this braid that has quite a lot of black in it compared to this one here that's a lot more just the medium grays this is actually the end of it which i'm hoping gives me enough yardage for a sweater there we go i mean i think a lot of you are spinners but the super simple way to join which is a question i've gotten asked in the past is just to overlap these fibers 
and then allow them to twist together. As easy as that. They basically just all get melted together, no problem. Get that twist back in here and then we just overlap those fibers and we're good to go. The best part about spinning is not having to weave in any ends. It's not like stitching where you have to secure your ends. It's just, just keep on going until the end. And then you take it off. I guess it's a little different if you break your yarn when you're plying or something, but generally in spinning, you don't have to worry about that. really like how in these areas with more contrast how some of the single has some different contrasted bits I'll show you here that doesn't really make too much sense but on here you can see there's some areas where you see the light and the dark barber pulling kind of but since it's all one color I know it's kind of going to meld all together but I do expect that in the plying we'll see more of that too more of just the subtle variation I think it'll be nice for a garment that's not wild colors, just again, subtle differences, but still interesting. Having variation makes it really interesting for me at least to knit with, rather than just ball after ball of like a commercial yarn. That's one of the appeals of the hand spun is that it, every stitch is different. Like I'm getting a little thinner again. I need to consciously remember to go a little thicker. Got some Etsy orders to pack this weekend. I'm really thankful to keep up with mostly just the stitch markers lately. I have some resin ones and enamel stitch markers mostly and just a mixture of like with the lost lobster clasp or the fixed string and uh, yeah it's been really fun to keep that going and see packages going kind of all over back in the winter i was doing a lot more yarn and fiber and i really have kind of taken a little bit of a step back from that i do have a few things still listed on etsy but just haven't been doing as much really feel like say dyeing self-striping yarn is just so time intensive and when I don't have any childcare, I really notice that it cuts into my normal time. Um, not that it's not good and I, I do enjoy doing it and everything, but I don't want to ignore my kids because I'm trying to dye yarn or anything. And sometimes it feels like a lot trying to keep up with a lot of dyeing at the same time or <laughs> trying to get a lot of balls out. So. Maybe I'll pick it up again in the future, but I think I'd need a little bit of childcare to make that happen. I can maybe come to the place too of just realizing, not that you can't do it all, but you can't do it all at once. And uh, yeah, for some of those things, there are definitely amazing people who work from home and are able to get a lot of stuff done, but I'm not really comfortable leaving kids unsupervised or anything to have the chunks of time available to do that. So it's always a balance and I enjoy the process and trying to figure out what's going to work because it certainly changes all the time as I'm sure any of you with kids likely know. My kids are now seven, five, and two. So things have changed a lot in the last few years. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to having the summer together and being able to spend some time outside and go camping and just all the fun stuff that happens in the summer especially with kids and kids getting the summer off from school and especially living in a cold place where winter is really not so fun so summer is much longed for throughout the whole year I'm gonna do a little bit more here and then I'll show you how my bobbin is looking before I say goodbye. I'm 
try to keep moving it to fill it up. You can see there's, maybe you can see, there's these dips in here that uh, I have not been filling evenly, but yeah, compared to this one. There's definitely some thicker chunks, although there are a few in here too. I like to try to see how consistent I'm keeping it. Also with the 3D printed bobbins, I just love seeing that end shot and seeing all the color in there. Ah, I lost my, there it is. Lost my fiber while I was shuffling around. There we go. You can see how it's filling here now. I love how it's all gray, but there's still that variation. I know I keep saying that, but it's just fun to check on the progress and see how it's looking. Thank you so much for joining me. And uh, yeah, I hope to check in with you all again here soon. Have fun with whatever you are working on these days and I will see you in the next video. Bye.